My name is Chrissy Beltran and I'm from Buzzing with Miss V. I'm a reading writing instructional coach and I work with uh, kinder through fifth grade and um, this is my first video. Today I'm gonna tell you about my encounter with Mark Brown. So we had a clothing drive in our city and um, any school in the city can participate. It was the Candle Lighters is an organization that helps kids with cancer and helps their families and so they were hosting this enormous clothing drive um, and the school that collected the most pounds of clothing would receive uh, Mark Brown as a guest author to their school. So of course, you know, my school heard this and we were like, how have we never heard of this contest before? We have to win this contest contest this year because Mark Brown is going to come to our school. And also it's great to help the Candlelighters because they're a great organization. We decided that we had to pull out all the stops and we were, like, I didn't even care if my family was naked for the rest of the year, they were going to give me their clothes. I was going to go to their house, they were going to put clothes in the bag and I was going to take them to my school to donate because we had to win this author. Through the whole month of February, like teachers are driving up with their trucks full of clothing, bags of clothes that they've, I don't know, begged, borrowed or stolen. They've just, they're just, we're filling this whole nurse's office full of clothes every day. Kids are showing up with clothes. They get to wear jeans every day that they bought a bag of clothes. The kids are showing up with clothes every day. They're, you know, the office is full of clothes. Like, you know how, how Goodwill smells, it was kind of like that. Um, we've just got our stage just heaped full of clothes. And so finally the candlelighters come, they make their last pickup and we're all like our fingers are crossed because the other schools they still have some time left in their, their events. And so we were just like desperate, like every day we're, we're, we're pestering um, the principal and the secretary, did you know, do you hear anything, do you know who won? Please don't tell me anybody else got more clothes than us and we're like don't tell anybody our secrets, don't tell anybody how we gathered so many clothes, nobody needs to know. It's like on Monopoly, whenever you, you know, you pass by somebody's property and they don't notice, you just keep your mouth shut. You just don't say anything because then they'll, they'll watch for you next time and they'll catch you. So we don't want anybody to know how we managed to get so many clothes and I'm still not going to tell anybody because next year we're going to win again. You know, they, they made the announcement on Wednesday afternoon. They said, they called our school and they were like, congratulations, you were first place. You gathered 12,800 pounds of clothing. And we were like, ah, because we we're, you know, desperately excited for this contest. And so then we all just kind of had a moment where we're like, oh my God, that means Mark Brown is coming on Friday. This is Wednesday at like 1.30 in the afternoon. And that means Mark Brown was coming to our school at 8.30 on Friday morning. And we were like, Oh my God, how are we gonna get ready for Mark Brown? So all the teachers like flew into action, like the school has kind of exploded and there were like Arthur ears everywhere and there were, you know, Buster ears and, and glasses and, and all of these little projects that were adorable with Mark Brown and, and they were watching interviews and there was just Arthur stuff everywhere, all over the hallways and kids were, all they could talk about was Mark Brown, like everything else stopped. We were like, state test, Psh, what's that? Mark Brown's coming on Friday, we don't care. So we all we did was read Arthur, like for two days and we did nothing but fun stuff. And then Mark Brown, I almost said Arthur showed up on Friday. <laughs> well, he did actually. Mark Brown showed up on Friday and he brought Arthur NDW with him. So we were supposed to arrive at like 8.15 and then the first presentation was at 8.30 and he just like, he's just like this sweet man. He just showed up at like 7.45. There's all these whisperings, like the, you can hear the rumor mill. Mark Brown's here. So I'm like, well, I'm heading over there because I've got a camera. <laughs> so I, I head to the front of the school <laughs> and there's like a little cluster and sure enough, there's Mark Brown standing in the middle 45 minutes early. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, I saw that you had my name on the marquee and my name on a parking space. So I knew you were ready for me. So here I am. And we're like, okay. <laughs> so we led him all the way down the hallway and he paused to look at almost everything. It was incredible because he's been doing this for a really long time. So you can't tell me that he hasn't seen 900 million Arthur Craftivities in his experience. I, this is not the first time the man has seen somebody write letters about Arthur's birthday, right? But every display he paused and was like, this is just incredible. This is amazing. Well, look at you guys are so prepared. I can't believe you did this all in two days. And we were like, because we had to, we just we have to be the best. Okay, we're walking all the way down to the library. We finally get there. It's all the way on the other end of the school. He's paused to read all the kids' stories, and it's just it's just been this beautiful event already. And he just got there. So then we go to the library. We set everything up, and he gets he gets himself um, situated with his with his mic and his uh, speakers and his chart tablet because he's gonna draw Arthur for the kids and do this cool little art lesson. My librarian friend was like, Chrissy, you need to show him the photo booth, and I was like. Oh, it's really scary because I had made this photo booth with Arthur ears 
and glasses and buster ears and all different kinds of, of props to use. And then the background was the big circle for the Arthur logo. So I was like, we, we all took pictures with it, you know, the faculty um, before he came and I put up this bulletin board that said, find your inner Arthur. And I was very proud of it. I was like, do you think he's gonna wanna do it? And she was like, you have to ask him. So I, I went and I said, Mr. Brown, if you have a couple minutes, would you like to take a turn in our photo booth? And he was like, well, sure. So we headed over to the photo booth and he was he kind of stood there and then I said, well, there are some props if you would like to use some. And he was like, well, you've got all kinds of ears here. And he picked up some Arthur ears and he put them on his head and let me take a picture of him. He was just the best person. Then the kids got to see their presentation. <laughs> it was incredible. Um, he did a beautiful presentation for K2. He showed them how he used to draw Arthur and how he draws Arthur now and why that changed. He talked about where the ideas from, for Arthur came from in the first place. Um, it, of course, he was telling his, his kids a story because isn't that the way everybody says they get their ideas whenever they're writing children's books is telling their kids stories. Um, and so then he helped the kids create this original creature with parts from all different kinds of animals. And he was like, what kind of uh, ears should we draw? And they were like, elephant ears. And then he says, what kind of tail should we draw? And they were like, a zebra tail. And then he said, what kind of legs should we draw? And one of the kids goes, fish legs. <laughs> and everybody was kind of like, what, what, what's Mark Brown going to say about fish legs? And he just said, fish legs. Are you trying to trick me? And then he moved on and I thought, that's lovely. I don't think that kid was trying to trick you, but that was really generous. <laughs> so then they do this crazy animal with, you know, no fish legs, but like chicken legs and ant legs and all sorts of silly things. And the kids just had a blast. And then he autographed books and he was so gracious and kind and he autographed so many books. Um, and then we all harassed him for pictures because <laughs> He's like a celebrity. And so then uh, after that whole round, he did everything with a smile on his face. And, uh, and then he had a few more minutes. And so I ran to buy a book. And, uh, and I stood in line and I was like, I'm gonna have Mark Brown autograph my book. Okay, I actually bought two books. And so I'm standing there thinking, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have him autograph these. And then um, I'm like two people away from the front of the line, the woman in charge of him, his, the sponsor from the um, local business that sponsored his visit said, we need to pause here. Uh, Mark Brown needs to do an interview. And we were like, no, because we're standing there with our books. And we were like, well, this stinks, you know. I mean, we, we assumed that he would sign them later, but we weren't really completely sure if he was going to have time because it was kind of a short, it was like a two hour visit and on the dot he had to go. So then we're, we're just kind of standing there with our books like forlornly, you know, hoping that he finds them and to sign them later. So then he did his interview with uh, one of the TV stations and then the third through fifth graders came in and he did another beautiful presentation and the funniest story that he told in the whole presentation was about um, his goat, who apparently is named Hillary Clinton which is, I mean, it's funny for a lot of reasons. This is really, <laughs> that, that's not the whole story, but that's really funny. So then he told us that Hillary Clinton actually went to visit him. And uh, whenever he met her, he said, you know, Hillary, I have someone that you should meet. And she was like, well, this is kind of weird. So she went and got her secret service guy. And then they, they went out into this pasture of this field um, where he has his goat. And he said, Hillary Clinton, meet Hillary Clinton the goat. And she was like, <laughs> I guess she didn't think it was that funny, but we thought it was hilarious. Uh, he finished his third through fifth presentation and then um, people hustled to get in line again and he did sign my books. He actually signed two books for me. Well, one book for me and one book for my niece. Arthur's birthday and isn't he clever? He, he put it on a little birthday tag. That's his signature. And then it says to Olivia for my niece. These are my new Arthur books. And um, it was just an incredible day and we wouldn't change a thing. We were so proud to have them and so pleased that they came and so thankful for the Candlelighters for hosting such an incredible contest. So that's, that's my story for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I really enjoyed talking to you even though it was really weird because it's actually just a camera. And um, be sure to follow my blog at www.buzzingwithmissb.com. Uh, you can check out my Teachers Pay Teachers page. They're free stuff and other products that might support you in the classroom. And um, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. And all of those you can get to from my blog, but basically my handle is buzzing with Misty.